Today, I'm putting a twist on an already popular idea, NBA imperialism, but I'm also putting every player on their college team similar to my last video. Now, every team is not going to be perfect. Not every player has a model in 2K, and certain teams like St. John's, for example, who used to be a powerhouse but haven't had a star drafted since Mullen in 85, I decided to leave off the list. So, if your favorite team or player didn't make it, I'm sorry. Phil, I've created some of the best all-time rosters you have ever seen, though some are lagging behind the others. Every team has been placed on this map with total control of their state unless shared with another school. When it came to certain states like North Carolina who have three separate teams, I mapped out where each college was and spread it out as evenly as possible, although Arizona did get the short end of the stick. And you'll just have to trust me that I got it right. The team that captures every single territory wins. To figure out who goes first, we spin the team wheel, and to find out what direction they are heading in, we spin this wheel of arrows. Oh, and one last thing. I added six of the best college players of all time that didn't go to a big name college that are up for grabs and whoever wins the state first, though certain teams will have an easier route than others. So who are our first team be? And our first team is going to be the Indiana Hoosiers, but we got to see what direction they're heading in. Let's see what direction they're heading in, which is okay, a little bit northwest. Following the arrow, Indiana will be taking on Marquette, and I'm willing to throw in the state of Illinois up for grabs for the winner. Because why not? Indiana is led by Larry Bird, Isaiah Thomas, and some of the really solid players. And Marquette is slightly top-heavy with Jimmy and Dwayne Wade, but still should put up a good fight. And yes, I understand Larry went to Indiana State, but he went to Indiana for a few months, and you can't have a video without Larry Bird in when it comes to college, so he's there. Alright, a 10 point lead for Marquette isn't impossible when you have Dwayne Wade and Jimmy Butler on the same team. He's giving it back to Howard. Ooh, okay, he's drilling the three. I told you that's just in play. And the Marquette bench is getting into it. Well, at least Wes Matthews and Novak are getting into it. Alright, we got back into IT McGinnis. And oh my god, what a poster. Oh, Thomas Bryant is taking things into his own hands and drilling what's gonna be the game decider from mid-range. Indiana takes over Marquette and will also get to stay in between Illinois, adding George Mikan to the roster. They're looking pretty stacked. All right, next spin, we are going to be heading over with the Texas Longhorns, and they are going to be heading in. And the Texas Longhorns are going to be heading, okay, northeast. And that means we have Texas heading northeast, taking on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Arkansas has Iso Joe Johnson and Sidney Moncrief, but the duo on Texas of Kevin Durant and LaMarcus Aldridge has to be one of the scariest. Oh my god, the, this Texas roster has LaMarcus Aldridge, Mo Bamba, Jared Allen, and Miles Turner all on the court at the same time, but they're going to end up in the dub right there over Arkansas, who didn't put up too much of a fight. Texas now takes over Arkansas and is covering quite a bit of the map. Next up, we're going to be seeing the Louisville Cardinals up in action with Donovan Mitchell. And they are going to be heading, okay, southeast. Louisville is bashing through to take on one of the two Tennessee teams in the Tennessee Volunteers. But Tennessee is a sleeper team with Allen Houston, Bernard King, Dale Ellis, and Tobias Harris. Oh, Donovan Mitchell's in the paint. Oh, and he's getting blocked. Bernard Gang is running the other way, slipping inside. He gets fouled, so he's going to the free throw line. Okay, intense game. And gets the second. There's an eight-point lead now for Tennessee, but Louisville can still come back, especially with Donovan Mitchell on the court. All right, we got the screen right here. Allen Houston, oh my God, you can't be giving away free layups. And now Tennessee is taking over Louisville. And we will be seeing in action next. Oh, almost Indiana again, but the Villanova Wildcats. And Villanova is going to be taking their talents southeast again. Villanova heading directly southeast would just be giving them an entire free space. So instead, I'm going to challenge them to battle Georgetown for this entire area. And yes, Georgetown is just all of Maryland instead of just DC because it would be so tiny you want to be able to see it. So they just get all of Maryland because there's no other team in competition. Villanova is extremely guard heavy with Arzen, Lowry, and Brunson leading the way, while Georgetown is nearly all centers with Ewing, Matumbo, Morning, and Hibbert, but size doesn't always mean wins. Common theme so far with a lot of these teams be leading it to Kembe is telling no to Jalen Brunson. Oh my god, AI with the moves! Oh, he couldn't sink it, but Hibbert cleans it up, and that is going to be a pretty easy win for Georgetown. And Villanova gets dominated, and now Georgetown has a massive amount of control and is setting up one of the best rivalries right next to each other in Cuse and Georgetown. If you don't know, you need to check it out. Next up is going to be oh, the Kentucky Wildcats. I've been waiting for these guys to play. And their matchup is going to be, okay, Southwest. This could be interesting. 
And interesting it will be as Kentucky is going to take on a Tennessee team hot off beating Kentucky's rival, Louisville. But Kentucky is the obvious favorite here. Going exactly as you would expect it. Look at Booker running some routes right now around cat mid-range pull-up. And I mean, it's just gorgeous. This is how you thought this game was going to go. It's Kentucky. And exactly as you would expect, Kentucky dominates and takes over Tennessee. After that dominant performance, let's hope we get a closer one. And we're starting that one with the Ohio State Buckeyes, who are taking their talents not quite to South Beach, but they are going Southwest. One for Ohio State, who could face either Kentucky or Indiana, but I'll throw them a bone and face them off against Indiana, who are much easier now with George Mikan on the roster. Ohio State has had some great players in its time, though, like Havlicek, Jerry Lucas, Mike Conley, and quite a few more. And Victor Oladipo literally has no quickness that he is trying to push with right now, which is absolutely unreal. Isaiah Thomas dumping it down to Larry Bird. Uh, Mike in on the weak side, and boom, a layup. Indiana is securing that dub right there. And it's time to say goodbye to Ohio State as Indiana is jumping in second for the most territory. Next up, we're seeing it, who I hope is... Okay, good. It's going to be LSU. That's pretty good. And LSU is going to be moving on from the bayou and heading up northwest which is going to be a clash with the current territory leader Texas and means a Shaq versus KD battle. But LSU is the much deeper team. All right, and here's something I didn't expect. Texas dominating. And I'm actually extremely surprised this one happened, but here goes Texas taking down LSU. See up next on the list, the Kentucky Wildcats are the first team to get a... Actually, that's the first team to get a second game. That was Indiana, but they're getting another game. And their next game is going to be Southeast again. We've been getting that a lot. Well, I feel bad for them, but Kentucky has to take on Wake Forest. But luckily, they do have Tim Duncan and CP3, so maybe they can beat the powerhouse. And so I said I felt bad for Wake Forest for having to take on Kentucky. And, um, well, it was rightfully so. As Tim Duncan's at the line, but they are down 117 to 84. So even if he sinks this gorgeous free throw, which he does... It's not going to matter at all. And we already saw how it went. So, Kentucky, congratulations on dominating yet another team. All right, we haven't seen a close back and forth game. So, please, Will, let's have one right here with the Florida Gators. And there's only so many directions they can go. All right, we need some form of north for Florida to be able to do something. And we are going southwest. I might be able to make that work. All right, now there's not a single portion that works. So, let's spin it. That also doesn't work for Florida. We need some form of North Florida to work, and we are, okay, getting it, Northeast. Immediately Northeast of Florida is Georgia Tech, led by none other than Chris Bosh and Mark Price. But to spice up the match, the winner will also get Alabama and Elgin Baylor. And Florida can't be ignored with guys like Beal, Horford, and Joe Kim Noah. Right, Joe Kim Noah is kind of running out of time. He's giving it to Maxwell to try to make something happen. Pull up midi, and Bosh gets the board. There we go. Oh, Marbury and Price are cooking up to Marbury in the dunk three-point game. Marbury's trying to do something. Chris Bosch actually relatively open look. Misses it, though. Board to Beal again. And, wow, Georgia Tech is just stepping off the gas. Now, it was one of our closer matches, but now Florida is taking over and adding Elgin Baylor to their team, which makes them even more of a scary threat. Our list of teams is getting a little bit shorter, but we still have some great ones in here. And next up, we have the Iowa Hawkeyes. And the Iowa Hawkeyes are going to be heading northeast. Not many teams north of Iowa here. The closest team northeast of Iowa is actually the Gonzaga Bulldogs, who are in Spokane, Washington. And both teams are underdogs in this video. So in an attempt to give them a fair shot, I'm putting every state between them up for grabs, aside from Minnesota with Oscar. Meaning, the winner of this gets to add David Robinson to their team. Gonzaga is led by the one-two punch of Stockton and Sabonis, and Iowa, well, let's just say they're at least here. Clark is giving it down to Kelly Olenek, and Olenek, oh, a missed shot, that's huge. All right, Iowa's trying to do something. We have Reiner, who's giving a screen going inside. Did he throw it up? Oh my God, and what a green three-point game. John Stockton and DeMontis Sabonis, that is a scary duo, and that is exactly why they are just perfect. All right, Iowa, you desperately need something at the pass of the corner into Ryder. He's throwing it. Oh, and a turnover. Nearly turns it over to get by Gonzaga, but Suggs picks it back up. And Iowa, I'm sorry, but that's going to be it. And it was a close one between Iowa and Gonzaga, but Gonzaga is taking over all of this territory and getting David Robinson. They now have the most, by far. 
A lot of teams we haven't seen in action, so hopefully we don't get a duplicate here. And, oh, we're getting UCLA. I love that. And UCLA's matchup, which I'm pretty curious, is going to be... Oh my god, it's Northeast. Now, it's a bit of a stretch to say Gonzaga is Northwest of UCLA, but it's close enough. So let's do it and throw Oregon in as well, since it's kind of in between the two. And let's have this battle. UCLA is the winningest college program of all time, and their team is honestly only behind Kentucky when it comes to talent. All right, extremely close game here. And I mean, just look at the players on this court. It is star-studded Westbrook. Instead of passing out the Eaton, takes a mid-range. Luckily, Eaton is massive, gets that board, and is able to put it back. But Westbrook, what are we doing? Having an answer Suggs is interesting, but he was a star at Gonzaga. We have shocked him wide open. He gets the ball to him late. He still takes the shot, falls down, and bricks it. That could be the game. Gonzaga got the addition of D-Rob, but it still wasn't enough as now UCLA is conquering the map. All right, that was a crazy upset, but we are going to be seeing, let's go, my Syracuse Orange. And I kind of want to see them go against Georgetown already just to get it out of the way, and that might be exactly what we're seeing. It wouldn't exactly be what we're seeing, as southeast of Syracuse is a tiny but mighty Yukon, led by Kemba, and because I'm a fan of Spice, the winner of this takes the whole New England area, meaning Steph, heads to the winner. Hughes lags depth outside of Mello and Dave Bing, but Yukon is a little top heavy as well with Kemba and Ray Allen. All right, Syracuse needs something to keep this lead even relatively safe. You gotta attack Kemba. I mean, it's Kemba or dish it down to Jeremy Grant. He has some inside position, takes it, and makes the layup, okay? All right, Dave Bing has a massive chance to ice it up right here to possession lead is secured. Fun fact, UConn and Syracuse actually went to the most overtimes in a college basketball game, but Syracuse comes out on top again, just like they did in the overtime game. It takes all of New England and gets Steph Curry onto the team. That is massive for them. All right, let's see the next one. Maybe we can get back-to-back -back Qs, or we're seeing Indiana. That could mean we see Syracuse, depending on the arrow. And speaking of the arrow, let's see what we got. Spin it around, and we are getting south east for the purposes of the video i'm going to consider southeast of indiana duke and kentucky just south so let's see bird and mike in versus Kyrie and tatum this will be a massive shift in the map if duke wins it duke is up 154 to 125 on indiana a team that i thought was going to be a massive competition for him and it, it doesn't even matter as they're also just missing free throws well, i expected duke to win it but not that dominantly but there we go now duke is capturing a massive amount on the map all right, next up after Indiana's embarrassment is the North Carolina Tar Heels. We have so many good games that could come from this. I was hoping I could lie about it getting to Florida, but it didn't exactly work. So now we are going northeast. There we go. We can do that. And we can do that because above North Carolina is our previous winner, Duke. Meaning the greatest rivalry, possibly in all of sports, is about to kick off and both teams are insanely stacked with talent. And don't forget, UNC is high-flying with two of the greatest dunkers of all time on the roster. Oh, and one of them's the go. Duke is absolutely blowing UNC and Jordan out of the water. Like, it's not even close. 150 to 126. Jordan's trying his best, but with those bricks, not helping. And UNC, say goodnight because Duke is taking you over. And that's actually crazy because UNC won the last video that I did about college teams. If you haven't checked that out, though, check it out. And this spin right here marks the halfway mark of everything. And we're starting the halfway mark with the Kansas City Jayhawks. Apparently I said city, but it's fine. We're just going to keep moving it with the arrow. And Kansas is heading northwest, which is going to be the leader in map coverage. UCLA, Will Embiid, Paul Pierce, Westbrook, Kevin Love, and Kareem all on the same court. This is going to be a good game. Give us at least one here. Oh, okay. All right, Kareem, three-point lead for it. Oh, wow, Kareem misses both. Dumping it right down to Kareem. Oh, the spin move, the double spin, and he goes out of bounds. Oh, my God, what a choke. All right, Wilt is committing one of the biggest chokes we've ever seen, but JoJo White's dishing it down to Joel and beat a nice extra pass at Danny Manning. That's beautiful offense. And JoJo White is coming the other way, trying to cook up Drew Holiday, of all people. All right, he's inside the paint, not doing a whole lot of anything. And Kelly Oubre, what kind of shot is that? Open and beat the board and puts it back. Kansas is now up two. All right, we got to see how UCLA is responding to it. Westbrook taking a step back three. Oh, no. What is that? I was expecting UCLA to win it, but Kansas now is getting Nebraska and all of UCLA's territory and is moving massively into first. We're currently halfway through the challenge. 15 teams are still in, and 15 teams have been eliminated, and certain teams still have yet to play a game. But who do you think is primed to take everything? 
Now that we've passed halfway, hopefully we can get a new team like UNLV or Florida's playing again. We have a chance for a new team here. And Florida is going to be taking their talents. Okay, Southwest. Florida is jumping over Missouri to take on the University of Texas, but whoever wins gets to take it too. We haven't seen Texas since they beat LSU, and we haven't seen Florida with Elgin. This is going to be exciting. I hope. All right, Jared Allen still is being guarded by Jason Williams, but he takes it himself and makes the layup. I guess it worked out. All right, Beal. Oh, instant three by Beal right there. Doesn't wait for the screen, and he drills it. I think Beal just called game. We're not going to have a big change in color, but look at Florida conquering a massive portion of the map. Alrighty, let's hopefully see like UNLV, USC, or Georgetown. We could be seeing the, one of the greatest rivalries come back. Georgetown is going to be moving up northwest essentially northwest of georgetown can be a slightly tricky one we could use three separate teams here but we're gonna make it interesting and pick a new team and jump the great lakes and take on michigan the fat five in michigan were a force to be reckoned with and their team overall is one of the best underdogs to win jordan Poole isoing on sleepy floyd he's actually getting into the paint but sleepy floyd pushing him out going back in jordan Poole. there's the layup securing a 16 point at least michigan win I was up for a different result, but goodbye, Georgetown, and hello, Michigan. 16 down, 14 teams left, and Memphis is getting its first look today. And it'll be getting its first look today in the northeast direction, where they would have to face probably the last team anybody wants to right now, Kentucky. And you can't count on a team with Penny Hardaway and Jared Rose. This might actually be one of the craziest things that has ever happened in a video. Kentucky's down 15. They have Booker, AD, Boogie, Rajon Rondo, and Bam Adebayo on the court, and they are losing to basically just Derrick Rose and Penny Hardaway. Nice pass down to AD, but it's honestly too late. And there it is, one of the craziest things ever. Memphis beats Kentucky. All right, I don't think this next one's going to top it, but at least we get to see a new team in Michigan State. Who is going to be taking all of their talents up to the northeast which is technically going to be canada we got to respin that one can't do that south is going to be good southwest we can do that but it won't be easy for michigan state because their opponent to the southwest is duke Matt johnson is finally stepping on the court but he has to go through the college avengers to make it out we got steve smith at the line absolutely drilling the free throw but duke is up 27 still and it wasn't even a close game, and it's going to equal one of the smallest transitions we've seen in today's video as Duke takes over Michigan State. We're almost down to 10 teams, which is kind of crazy that we haven't seen some run, but my Syracuse Orange are coming in. Arrow may have been stubborn, but Q's finally finds his opponent across the water in Michigan. Oh, and don't forget, Cuse now has Steph Curry on the court, joining Melo. And look at this. The full starters are out for Cuse. Dave Bing, Steph Curry, Carmelo Anthony, Jeremy Grant, and Ron Cycli. Look at Steph Curry trying to cook up his teammate. Ooh! and Jordan Poole and Jeremy Grant making the lay okay so Michigan intentionally followed Steph Curry for the last guy you want to do he early zero percented it that might be the first time I've ever seen Steph miss a free throw in 2k but he does get the second one but now it's only a two-point lead all right Cubes I need you to lock down for one possession or give Jamal Crawford a lay no oh man all right, Michigan's making me nervous. It looks like Glenn, Glenn Rice is trying to three-point hunt right now. Even a two would do it for these guys. Melo's playing some good defense. They're running out of time. He's going to be taking a pull-up mid-range. It's wide open. Oh, my God. Glenn Rice, ice in his veins. All right, Jamal, Jamal Crawford's trying to do, work a little something. Oh, my God. They're leaving Rudy wide open. He can shoot, and he makes it. Oh, my God. All right, Syracuse is breaking down on defense, but hopefully they can score something on the offensive end. Derek Coleman sending the screen for Steph Curry, a fadeaway three. Oh my god. There is some clutch shooting right now happening. Well, Karis LeVert hit the first, and he's also going to hit the second, but Cuse only has .4, so just a last second heave, which doesn't even count. They're out of here. It may upset me, but Michigan now has the entire New England area. We're down to 10 teams, and we still haven't even seen Oklahoma play once. We almost got it, but Kansas is moving. Northeast direction. Northeast of Kansas is Duke. Two all-time teams that are completely stacked. And to put even more on the line, the winner gets Oscar Robertson. This is going to be good. But I didn't expect Tatum to be taking a free throw for Duke, cashing it, and still being down 29 points. Well, it wasn't exactly an upset, but... 
a crazy blowout that nobody expected in Kansas has taken over basically half of the board. We have nine teams left and only one of the Blue Bloods is left up on the board, which is just crazy. And finally, we're seeing Oklahoma, but they should be nervous because they could be going against Kansas. All right, I'm praying for Oklahoma that they get a good spin here. As long as it's not north, they're good. Ooh, Northwest might be bad. And exactly as expected, Northwest is right into Kansas, who now have Oscar Robertson leading Embiid and Wilt Chamberlain. If they win this, it is a literal miracle. Now, Oklahoma has a mix of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State players, but they still aren't close to Kansas. And, well, I can't say I'm surprised by this. Just upset. Kansas is easily the favorite now to win. And, well, they gave it their best shot, but Oklahoma gets swallowed up by Kansas. And the scary part is... If they match up against somebody like UNLV or either of the teams in Arizona, Kansas could also get Scotty Pippen. But ignoring that, next up is going to be Michigan again. We could see another Kansas game, which I'm kind of hoping doesn't happen, but we'll have to see as they're going to go Northwest, which is exactly in line with Kansas, who could take over half the map with this win over Michigan. We can't count out Kansas, though, because they have Oscar, Will, and Embiid on the court right now with JoJo White and Lovelet, who is taking a three, breaking it. But, oh, my God, Will, what do you do against two centers like that? Maybe not. Lovelet still trying to get something, and Will down low. Bully ball and one. All right, Will, this is for the lead. No granny free throw, but he is sinking it anyway, and now Kansas is up one. Jordan Poole's back on the court along with Chris Webber. This could actually be massive. Poole, oh my god, Poole tries to pass it to Webber, but it's a turnover. Paul Pierce is coming down the other way. He's dropping it down to Will, and there's the layup for the three-point lead. Michigan's choking. Back out to Poole, and they commit a third turnover in a row. All right, this has got to be for the game. Danny Manning, boom, gets the first. It's already a six, and now Danny Manning makes it a seven-point game. Michigan actually just choked that entire thing away. I've never seen a team crumble harder under pressure. And if I'm being honest, I thought Michigan had one of the best chances of beating Kansas, but now they're just a part of the group. Other than Kansas, we're going to go with it. Arizona State, thank you, and we're going to make sure they don't play Kansas. To do that, we have to make sure they don't go north whatsoever, and they're going south. I think that's okay. And it would be perfect for ducking Kansas, as they're now going to be taking on USC, meaning we now get to see two teams that have yet to touch the court, and Harden is taking on DeMar. And Gus Williams is speeding down the court, but going to take it slow. Gus Williams, though, is going to be blowing it by, and look at him go, setting up the lay and getting a big lead for USC. I mean, they're just dominating, honestly. And while it might not have been a thriller like the one in Manila, but at least it wasn't a Kansas W again. All right, we're narrowing down our list of teams, and USC is back up on the board. A lot of stakes at this one, depending on where the arrow goes, and it's directly north for USC. Who I'm going to be extremely generous to and count UNLV as north for USC, because I have no confidence in them beating Kansas, like, whatsoever. And the winner of this game gets everything here, including Scottie Pippen. UNLV is a program you wouldn't expect to be as solid as they are, and we just saw USC, and we just saw USC is super solid as well. All right, Reggie, Theus, two of the biggest free throws you've ever taken in the first one. He's sinking? This is the time for Theus, and man, he's clutch. Five-point lead with the running Rebels. 26 seconds is more than enough to come back from only down five unless you're taking those type of shots. UNLV is fully backing up their defense, knowing that they need a three here. Porter Jr. is just taking way too much time off the clock. Has to take a off-dribble contested three. It's not going to be good. Marion corrals it. USC is still following, but it's over. UNLV takes the dub over USC, also getting Scotty to the roster. Could they be the Kansas Killers? I don't know about Kansas Killers, but they got a good shot. And we're down to five, and we're heading back to the Florida Gators, who have Elgin. So we have to spin it again, and there's also not a team east of Florida. There actually is a team east of Florida currently, though just barely, and it's Memphis. We've missed Rose and Penny since they upset Kentucky, but can they take down the red-hot Elgin Baylor and grab everything? Bradley Beal is still going to be trying to cook right here despite this ugly Memphis floor. Pull-up mid-range is good at the 10-point lead. Oh, Joakim Noah down to Al Horford, who's trying to make a little bit of a move, and oh my god, that's just too many. That That definitely seals the game there. And that victory leaves us with just four teams left on the board. But out of those four teams, who do you think is going to take it? I think it's got to either be Kansas or Florida, but you never know, right? And because it's only four, we haven't seen the wheel look like this in a long time. And UNLV is back at it with Scotty Pippen this time. Now, again, we don't want them to go north, but if they have to, they're going to have to face Kansas. Lucky for them, though, I think they're playing Arizona. 
which is the perfect warm-up game for them to take on the two favorites, especially with new addition Scottie Pippen. But you never know, Arizona could be insane. I mean, we haven't really seen them yet. And they have talent across the board with Gilbert Arenas, DeAndre and Iggy, and quite a few more. Scotty's got Gilbert on him. We're going to whip it over to Reggie. Theus, not too bad. Scotty's wide open to the paint. Get it to him. There they go. He misses the dunk. Oh, thank God he did that. I was about to blow a lid. All right, Gilbert, there's a big leap for UNLV, but Scotty the block. Oh, my God. He might be the MVP of the team. UNLV takes over Arizona, and our top three is solidified. I don't know why, but I'm actually a little bit nervous to do these spins and who is going to win it, but let's see. We have three teams. I expected it. This is this is a big game. All right, in Kansas, it's either UNLV or Florida that they're playing, and directly south is going to mean they're taking on Florida. And, well, I had a big hope for the Gators, but I guess Kansas is just too strong. 116 to 99. We got Embiid setting a screen. They're dumping it down to Oscar Robertson, who's taking a fadeaway. He thought they could do it. But a good fight by everybody that's tried. But Kansas now dominates basically the entire map. And UNLV is the only hope. And this is it. The final two teams. UNLV, now led by Scottie Pippen. And Kansas, led by... Well, basically a whole 95 overall starting lineup. Kansas has been dominating every single person that has tried, but maybe UNLV can pull off the Cinderella story. Kansas needs to find a way to speed up UNLV. They have the lead. They're really not going to do anything too crazy. Sean Marion setting screens and Scotty is just taking his time. Scotty's just taking his time. He doesn't need to do anything. They have a nine point lead against Kansas. Marion over to Theus. Again, they're just playing slow and nice basketball. Christian Woods setting the screen. Theus, you have to do something. That is not exactly what I would call playing it great. But I just don't think Kansas has enough time to do anything about it right here. JoJo White's trying something on Scottie Pippen. He's playing lockdown defense. Big O's in the corner. He's got to chuck up a bad shot. And UNLV has done it. They beat Kansas. And then we were left with only one. UNLV. The UNLV running Rebels didn't even play a game until there were only six teams left and took down a Kansas team that was crushing every single player and team in their path to win NBA imperialism with every player on their college team. But what if we took the exact same teams and put them into a full NBA season against each other? Who would win then? Click on this video to find out.